Hello, recently on holiday, and when I came back, I had three cars from s and I've done quite a lot of these cars in the past, uh, to the point that I don't want to go through the, the inner workings of everyone again. So what I'll do, I'll put a little playlist up here so you can see all the various different cars and how they work and, and things like that. But what we've got today, I think this one and this one, maybe Wi-Fi, I mean, it actually says Wi-Fi on it. And I think this is a Wi-Fi one with a new type of light on it. And then this is the interesting one, this little van here. But it, it's hard to show you them here. Let's go into close up. Let's get them all out of the boxes and let's see what they do. Okay, I've gone ahead and got those out of the boxes. Um, obviously you get things like a USB cable for charging and the instructions and stuff like that. Watch the previous videos if you want to see that in great detail. And as per usual, different options are available with them, except for this one. Because this is Wi-Fi, it only drives via your phone. So there's no option to get that with uh, a controller or goggles or anything, I think. Although you can still, as previously, you've got the little socket there so you can put an FPV camera in, but then you'd be driving it with your phone and using goggles, which is a little bit weird. This one is the uh, regular RC version of that one. So you'll need yourself uh, a little controller. They do actually mention now that the RC part of this is FlySky compatible, specifically it's AFHDS-1. I know it's with a multi-protocol modular, I've bound to the old versions of these. I need to do a little bit on the steering, it was always slightly off, but it you can do it. So for those of you that think, oh, I want a little FPV car, but I really don't need the control, I've already got like, you know, a good radio. Um, you should be fine with a multi-protocol module. So these ones are interesting in terms of their new sort of a lighting setup, um, which I'll show you quickly. It now sort of has this front grille thing. And of course that is changeable via this as per normal. So we've got our headlights there, two levels of that, and the underlights there. but that front bit always stays red. We'll have a proper drive of this in, in a, a minute with FPV, but that's how it looks. Let's move those guys aside for a second, because this one is a little bit different. It's a little bit bigger, still says 100th scale, but you know, 100th scale compared to what? The different thing about this one, apart from the size, is it's got a camera in the front windscreen there, so it's all very much self-enclosed. And this one, happily enough, is to use a regular controller as well. So if we turn this guy on, and we've got the same things about the light. The light seems to be on that middle bit there. And these kind of light up a bit more if we do the turn signal. As you can see there, we have picture. So if we drive along, we can see what we're doing. Obviously we'll take this for a proper drive in a second, but that's the quick overlook uh, let's take all these for a little drive. I'll put the FPV camera on this one and we'll have a little bit of a Wi-Fi drive along there because they said there were some changes here. What they've said with this new generation of cars is they've got a better server speed so control should be more accurate and they said it's been optimized better for working at lower speeds uh, and these go a bit crazy when they go fast so it'd be interesting if you can get them very slow to do more precise things but yeah let's take them for a drive and see how they feel. Well this is me just filming around the, uh, the kitchen, nice hardwood floor. And uh, as per normal, when you get these things going, it's very easy to let them go out of control. On this one, especially, just turning to the left there, my one seems to have a, a little problem when it sometimes it just doesn't want to turn at all. I think it just, th those wheels just skid sometimes when I'm trying to turn it. Ah, it seems right there. But yeah, you, you, it is hard under sort of high speed to get these things going in a straight line. Anyway, that's line of sight. I do like the, the little front grille. The lights don't look flickery in uh, real life. The camera's picking up uh, the sort of the flicker rate. But um, anyway, let's, let's FPV it because that's going to be more fun, isn't it? If we just take this off. And I've got a camera from another one of my machines. And let's go and take that off for an FPV drive. And off we go for a drive. And there's not much new to report on this versus the, the previous one I did. The, the camera 
is it how it is it's it's not brilliant it's not fantastic in the dark but it's it's stable enough to give you a decent image and recently they did uh, do better things on the range of both the control link and the FPV link it's still rated as only about 20 meters which is not much but unless you've got a really big house you're generally okay and I, I still like this as a sort of explore around these cars go pretty fast for the scale of them and it's really easy to spin them out at high speed and if you go over a bump you might crash. In the original iteration of these cars they, they would not have the power to work on carpet. They do now although if you've only got carpets in your house I would look for something that's you know not a massive pile and it doesn't control as well as it, it would on the floor as you saw I got sort of stuck against the wall there a little bit. It's it's much much better on, on a regular hardwood floor or even if it's fake wood, it's pretty good. Anyway, that's that one. Good fun just to explore around a house. If you've got a couple of them, good fun to race around and stuff like that and get a bit competitive going. So, here's the little camper van thing, which I have to say does feel a lot more controllable. Where there's a little bit more mass to it, um, it goes a bit better. Let me just sort that out. I can just see that those wheels aren't quite aligned. I'm using the same control on every single one now. So there's a little bit of um, trimming to do. That's a bit better. Yeah, so this one, I can more easily take around in full speed. It steers very nicely. It doesn't slip out too much, which is all good. And of course, it's got the camera built in. So now let's go FPV on it. Now I have to say I love the van. The handling is the best of the, the sort of speed type cars we've had. I've, I really like the off-road stuff as well, but for going relatively fast, this is cool. You'll notice there's a slight uh, sort of encroachment on the viewport in terms of, you can see a bit of the roof and a bit of the, the other details sticking through. Uh, for me, that's not a big problem. I, I kind of thought that kept me in the moment a little bit more. Than, uh, than just a regular thing. We're obviously looking through a piece of plastic, you know, as, as opposed to a glass windscreen, and that's gonna do slight things to the picture, but I think it's pretty good. The, the, the thing I really like about this is you can go full throttle, and it doesn't flip out and is not hard to control. It's probably a little bit slower than the cars overall, but um, it's, it's a really good drive. I mean, I don't know if it would do that well against them if you were having a race, and I've got caught on a cable here. But where it's more controllable, I feel you've got a, a good chance of racing anything. Uh, again, it goes pretty well on the carpet. It's never as good or as smooth as going on a hardwood floor, but it certainly works. And uh, I just go along and, and scare the dog of it who's not used to cars at all. She's quite chill at uh, quads, but put the car in front of her, she's like, what is this? What's invading my space? She's not very happy about it, but she settles down pretty quick. Anyway, that is the little van, and I really like it a lot. Okay, we've got the Wi-Fi interface here, and it's kind of set so it's not too quick. And you can drive it around using the touch controls. I still don't particularly like the touch controls. No, there's a reason for that, isn't there? Just go away. Uh, and that's because I'm all about physical joysticks. As I said in my last video, you can connect a Bluetooth joystick to this. Uh, watch that video to find out more about it. But yeah, this this is essentially the same as the last car, which I would say watch the last video about, the difference being this, this front grille essentially. But it's quite controllable. However, I did have a problem with the app the first time I tried this, which I'll just show you here. There seemed to be an update on the app since last time, which now requires you to log in. And to do that, you have to put in your phone number do a capacha and they send you an SMS code and then you can log in and drive it. Now, in order to do that, you need to make sure that you don't go into the Wi-Fi of the car before you try and log in, else you won't have any internet connectivity. But I had a problem here where it seemed like their server wasn't responding, it wasn't sending the SMS, and I was unable to drive the car because of it, because I couldn't log in. Um, I did talk to them about this and sort of made the point that, you know, people want to drive their toy car without having to rely on connectivity and stuff. They, they said this is still being worked on. They're, they're trying to gamify some of it, um, but they will resolve this in, in future updates. So a, a log on and 
connectivity won't be required, which, which is a relief. Because obviously, if like the server's down or if this company goes away in the future, you obviously still want to be able to drive your little Wi-Fi car. Well, as I said before in the video, or at least I think I did, I started filming it a while ago, so it's hard to tell. These are very much what I'd call a evolution in the series rather than a revolution. And they've, s and have been doing this all the way through. They came out with a product which was pretty good and they iterated their design again and again and again, making things better, making it more powerful so it could drive on carpet, making the VTX not overheat, which it tended to do in the very beginning models. Um, and in these ones, although they said they've, they've like worked the steering so it's better and it's better under slow conditions, it's really hard to tell. It's that much of a little little evolution that you can't really tell. The main thing you can tell is it's got grill lights now, which uh, are quite pretty. But essentially they drive much the same as the other sort of speedy cars. Barrage your life is pretty good. You're looking at an hour without a camera or about 30 minutes with a camera on these guys. That's how long they'll go for. Um, and I think it's about an hour charging as well. So it's it, it's pretty good. You, you'll get a lot of fun out of them. As I said, with these speedy cars, if you've got a couple of them, um, it's a really good laugh to race around. They're, they're okay in exploring car as well. I really like the off-road stuff for that. They're, those are they're my real favorites for exploring the house. Uh, and as I said, Wi-Fi looks like it will evolve. The, the control method at the moment on the, the touchscreen is not too bad if you slow it down. You can put a Bluetooth controller there. But yeah, I still prefer a physical remote, which is why I'm all about like the 2.4 versions, really. However, star of the show, I thought, was this little van. I didn't think I was going to like it. It looks a little bit weird. It's a little bit out of scale with the other stuff a touch, you know, but it controls really, really well. You can go full speed, you can zip it about, it doesn't spin out like the other stuff. It might not be quite as fast, but you do get an awful lot of handling. Um, and I like the fact that the camera's inside there and, and so you don't have to think about it, you know, pressing it or bumping into stuff like that. So that's all really good. Really like that one. Well, well done on this new interesting little model. Anyway, if you thought this video wasn't quite in-depth enough and I didn't go into enough detail on either of these, don't forget there's that playlist and I review all of these from the, the very first ones to the later ones. And in the earlier thing, I go through a lot more details about how the remote works and the sort of goggles you get with them. Because, of course, these are sold in various packs on its own with a camera, with a controller, with goggles in various things. So you can check all that out. And you can see a lot more about how the Wi-Fi works in the previous video. Although, as I said, it's going to change as the app develops as well. Thanks very much to s and who sent these along for me for review. And of course, you'll find links down below if you want to check it out in more detail. Hope that review has been helpful and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. So thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.